Well, hello and welcome back. We've got a great topic tonight. We are solving quadratic equations with complex solutions. So basically, that's telling us that we're going to see a lot of I's tonight, or imaginary numbers. As we saw in the last unit, the roots or zeros of a quadratic equation can be found using the quadratic formula. So I just want to recall when we use that formula, we are finding what we call the roots or zeros. All right, that's what we're solving for. Since this formula contains a square root, it is fair to investigate solutions to the quadratic formula. Now, when the quantity b squared minus 4ac, known as the discriminant, is negative. So I think we've seen that word discriminant. And remember, discriminant is just the junk under the radical, b squared minus 4ac. Okay, and that'll pop up on our quizzes a lot. It's not the radical itself, just the junk under the radical. And what they're telling us is we are going to now get a negative number under that radical. Exercise 1. Use the quadratic formula to find all solutions to the following equation. Express your answer in simplest a plus bi form. Check your answers by using the store feature on your calculator. Alright, now they told us to use the quadratic formula. I want you to pretend they didn't because they never will on our test or on our exam. They're not going to say use the quadratic formula. All they're going to say is express your answer in simplest a plus bi form. So what that tells you, when you see a plus bi form, basically tell, that tells you that it's not going to factor and that you have to use quadratic formula. All right, so I want you to be able to interpret a plus bi means quadratic formula. All right, so let's take this equation. Let's get our quadratic formula going. x equals negative b plus or minus the square root b squared minus 4ac divided by 2a. And let's identify our a is 1 our b is negative 4, and our c is positive 29. And let's just carefully plug those in. So I'm going to go with a positive 4 plus or minus, let's see, negative 4 squared minus 4 times 1 times 29 divided by the 2a we can do in our head, and hopefully we get 2. Now remember, I'm not typing in the square root. I'm just typing in the numbers under the square root. And remember, that's called your discriminant. Okay, so don't type the square root in itself, just the numbers under there, including parentheses. When I do that, I got a negative 100 on my calculator. Hopefully you got the same thing. Okay, now, <clears throat> we haven't seen a negative under the radical when we've done quadratic formula, and that's where the a plus bi comes from. As I clean this up, I'm going to get 4 plus or minus, okay, the negative under the radical turns into an i, and the square root of 100 is simply the number 10. So I now get 10i. Anytime I have that negative under the radical, I'm getting an imaginary number. Now at this point, I just need to clean it up a little further. So on top, remember, we're going to factor. I can pull out a 2, and I'm left with 2 plus or minus 5i, all over 2. Take 10 seconds, see if you're right. 2 times 2 is 4. 2 times 5 is 10i. It checks. And lastly, I can cancel the top 2 with the bottom 2, and I get two final answers of 2 plus 5i and 2 minus 5i. Now, you don't have to separate them. You can just say it's 2 plus or minus 5i. That's perfectly fine. I just want you to be clear that you have two answers. Now, you can check these answers on the calculator, and that's what those directions said. So basically, on your calculator, you're going to say 2 plus 5i, and you're going to store that into alpha a. Now, we've practiced store. It might be a little while, but 2 plus 5i store into alpha a. And I want to remind you the i button is if you hit second, and then you hit the decimal at the bottom of your screen, you'll see an i there. Okay? So grab your calculator. Let's store that in. And once you have that stored in, we're now going to go back and type our original function in, but obviously instead of x's, I'm going to use a's. And I took a picture of my screen just so you see what it looks like. I have my, five, my 2 plus 5i stored into a, hit enter. And now I typed in my original equation in using a's, and I should get 0 because that's what this question was equal to. And then I would do the same thing with the 2 minus 5i. But that's how you can easily check to make sure you have the correct answer. Question 2, very similar. Solve each of the following quadratic equations. Express your answer in simplest a plus bi. So you notice they didn't say use the quadratic formula. They just say simplest a plus bi, which in our heads has to mean quadratic formula. Now, the only problem with this setup is that it's not equal to what number? I can't do anything until it's equal to 0, so let's carefully solve. I'm going to subtract the 7x from both sides and add the 10. So that should get me a 0 on that side. So I'm going to go with x squared minus 12x 
plus 40 equals 0. Okay, now it's just our nice easy quadratic formula. So at this point, I suggest you pausing it. Okay, this is where our learning comes in. Pause it, try it on your own, and see if we get the same thing. So I'll let you follow my work, see if you were the same up to that point. Hopefully you went further than that. Um, I'm just pausing there for anybody who did get stuck. And if you went further, um, I only have a few more steps. I should get 12 plus or minus the square root of 16 is 4, and the negative turns into an i all over 2. And lastly, remember that f word of factor. I can pull out a 4 on top, and I get 3 plus or minus i all over 2. And now these won't disappear, but 2 goes into 2 once and into 4 twice. So I can say that's 2 times 3 plus or minus i, or I could say that's 6 plus or minus 2i. Okay, and then we'll go back and do the same thing. We can pause it, store it, and see what we get. Our next example B, same thing. I want you to find all the solutions in a plus bi form. All right, so they're telling us quadratic. Again, pause it, see what you get. Set it equal to 0, and let's go from there. All right, well, hopefully your work matched with mine. I had x squared plus 6x plus 11 equals 0. Pulled out my a, b, and c, plugged them in my formula. Now, in this case, we have to do a little extra step here. Notice I get negative 8 under there, so I know I'm getting an imaginary because of that i. But is 8 a perfect square? No. So we've got to slow down and do what we were doing way before. I know uh, 8 breaks down to radical 4 and radical 2. And I know I'm going to get that i out, so I'm going to pull that out already, all over 2. Okay, so this is just slow and neat steps at this point, guys. So I'm going to say that's negative 6 plus or minus. I know the square root of 4 turns into the number 2, so I'm going to say that's 2i, and I'm going to leave the radical 2 alone, all over 2. Now again, this is what we did with our old quadratic formula, nothing new. The only new part is having this i in there. And now lastly, I'll pull out my GCF on top. It looks like this number and this number are divisible by a 2. So I could be left with a negative 3 plus or minus i radical 2 all over 2. These 2's will cancel, and I get negative 3 plus or minus i radical 2. Example 3. Consider this parabola, y equals x squared minus 6x plus 13. Part A. Algebraically find the x-intercepts of the parabola. Express your answer in simplest a plus bi form. So I'm at, automatically I'm drawn to this a plus bi form, which I know in my head means quadratic formula. Now what the heck is an x-intercept? Well, if I draw any random graph and I cross the x-axis, I know at that point when I cross the x-axis, the y value has a height of 0. So when they say x-intercept, they're really just applying. You can always cross that off and say that means y equals 0. So I'm literally just plugging 0 into my y. Now I know I have to use quadratic because that a plus b i, so I'm going to write out my formula, negative b plus or minus the square root, b squared minus 4ac divided by 2a. And I'll quickly identify my a, my b, my c. a equals 1, b equals negative 6, c equals 13. So again, I'm assuming you would pause it at this point and get your answers. So pause it, see what you get. All right, and I squeeze mine in there. Um, I've got, hopefully you followed it, I had negative 16 under the radical. And then I've got my 4i here, I pulled out my 2 and canceled, and I've got 3 plus or minus 2i. All right, so now part B says, using your calculator, sketch a graph of the parabola. So I'm just going to throw this in my y equals and make a nice sketch of the parabola I see. So you can pause it, grab your calculator, get a nice sketch in there. I'll use the indicated window. So I'm setting my window from negative 5 to 10 and negative 5 to 20. I had a y-intercept of 13. And again, that's the y-intercept, where it crosses the y-axis. Did you have an x-intercept? Did your graph cross the x-axis? Mine did not. Mine did not cross the x-axis. Now it says, from your answers to a and b, what can be said about parabolas whose zeros are complex roots with non-zero imaginary parts? Well, here's what can be said. If you get an imaginary answer, your graph will never touch the x-axis. Okay, its roots are imaginary. They should not touch the x-axis. So let's just get that in our notebook there. So if we get complex numbers 
our graph will not touch the x-axis. Or we can say have an x-intercept. Now, you'll notice something special that we should have picked up in every problem. Basically, we have been getting a negative as our discriminant. And every time we got a negative as our discriminant, we got an imaginary answer. Did you catch on to that? If we had a negative under here, we got an imaginary answer. That means if your discriminant's negative, it should, your graph should never touch the x-axis. So exercise four, use the discriminant of each of following quadratics to determine whether it has an x-intercept. All right, so the key word is the word discriminant. Remember, that's just the part under the radical, b squared minus 4ac. So all we need is our a, b, and c. <clears throat> my a is 1, my b is negative 3, and my c is negative 10. And we'll plug them into the formula to see what we get. Remember your parentheses. It's negative 3 squared minus 4 times 1 times negative 10. I get an answer of 49. Therefore, because my discriminant is positive, I will have x-intercepts. So let's make a note, I will have x-intercepts. Okay, I will touch the x-axis. Let's try the next one. Just use the discriminant, b squared minus 4ac. Uh, my a in this case is 1, my b is 6, and my c is 10. So we'll plug them in. All right, grab that calculator, and let's see what type of number we get. This time, I get a negative 4. Now, remember, this is really the part that's under the radical, right? Therefore, this will have no x-intercepts, okay? Its roots are going to be imaginary. So let's put imaginary roots. Therefore, my graph is either going to look like that completely above or like this completely below. It can never touch the x-axis. Last example, um, let's see, I need my b squared minus 4ac. Let's see, my a is 2, my b is 3, and my c is 5. Carefully plug it in. 3 squared minus 4 times 2 times 5. I get a negative 31, and because that's the discriminant, that's the part that's really under the, or under the radical, right? I'm going to get imaginary numbers which means there are no x-intercept. So again, my graph is either completely above or completely below. It will never, it's impossible to touch that x-axis. And lastly, example 5 here, which of the following quadratics when graphed would not cross the x-axis? Well, this is a pretty straightforward question. A, you could graph all of them and see which one does not touch. Or again, we could use that discriminant formula, b squared minus 4ac. And what would happen is that we would get a negative number. Okay, if I get a negative number, that's the whole point for today, this graph would be completely above or completely below. It will never touch the x-axis. So I would just use my discriminant to determine that. So let's go for example 1. In example 1, my b is 5, so I'm going to get 5 squared minus 4 times 2 times negative 3. And if I type that in my calculator, that is a positive number. Let's go for example 2. Um, my a is negative 1, my b is negative 1, and my c is 6. So I get b squared, so that's negative 1 squared minus 4 times negative 1 times 6. That's going to get me a positive number. All right, let's try example 3. Uh, my a is 4, my b is negative 4, and my c is 5. So I've got 4 squared minus 4, whoops, negative 4 squared minus 4 times 4 times 5. That is definitely going to get me a negative answer. So I think I found my winner there. And again, if I get a negative under the radical, a negative discriminant, I will have imaginary roots. Well, that's all we have for you today, and we look forward to some great practice tomorrow. Have a great night.